up YouTube, Barcode here. Today I'm bringing you another DHC video. This video is going to be about strictly on gear, uh, whether what sets to put on what champions, and I'm gonna go over what gear sets to put on certain champions and how to gear them in early, mid, and late game. I'm gonna start with talking about the Elder Drake gear drops. Uh, Elder Drake will actually drop Vital, Keen, Dazzling, Brutal, and Rapid. Um, let's start with the four sets first, and then we'll talk about the two sets after. Um, so let's start with Dazzling. So Dazzling uh, right now is pretty broken. Uh, when the patch comes out, uh, whenever they are done testing everything, the 100 additions that they are adding to the game. So let's be patient with that. Uh, the Dazzling set is broken right now. Um, anyone that has a strip or is a support type healer um, would, with low cooldowns, mind you, would benefit from Dazzling. Um, it's just one extra utility that you can bring towards your team, okay? Um, dazzling, if you have another two or more AoE, which is area of effect skills that will hit multiple enemies in a certain area would benefit from dazzling um, like dark dryad why is why she's so good on dazzling is because she has a low cooldown time heal and also low cooldowns on her other skills so that she doesn't really need a depth she can benefit from dazzling much more than other healers because she has a low cooldown um, you know the, the adept set which in decreases your skills by 30% when, when your heal is already at 5%, the beneficial rate, you, what you would say, is, is literally like a second and a half. And I talked about this in a different video, but um, when you have a healer that has a 12 second heal, you know, you take 30% off of that, you decrease your skill by much more on a higher cooldown. So, yeah, putting Adept would be great on Dark Dryad, but because of her heal being low skill cooldown and it, it doesn't bring like burst healing, Dazzling would be more effective for her. Uh, other champions you could use it on is Strippers, so anyone that has a area of effect strips that removes the buffs from the other team, you strip and then have a chance to, to stun. Um, it's just much more beneficial on characters like that. Let's get some uh, examples of what Dazzling would be good on. Uh, Light Golem Basalt would be great on Dazzling set. Um, he has, you know, obviously the um, the steal, can steal buffs from the enemy. Um, once you do that and then you hit them with Dazzling, you can stun them. So immunity is, is, is really not beneficial against him because he can just strip the immunity and then stun afterwards plus all of he already has it in built in stun in one of his skills so it kind of raises the uh ability to stun um and then this earthquake has a huge radius on the map um disorients and then with the dazzling set can stun so it's just much more utility and you know instead of putting on like full vital or um or full like sturdy vital sets or anything like that um just would benefit your team much more here's another example that you could put dazzling on uh fire naga um because of this last skill uh removing all buffs from the enemy and blocking buffs and then you having the utility to be able to stun is just very beneficial um you know, it, it, regeneration to the team doesn't really do damage against the other team. However, this one is a low skill cooldown um, and can disorient. So it's just more utility, the better. The good example that Dazzling could be effective on is, you know, your, your Dark or Forest Pirates, um, like Kendrick. Um, once you, you know, because you're pretty much either building him for damage, uh, because you're if you're going to be bringing you know dark or nature pirate, you're going to be bringing a nuke team or a cleave team. So being able to stun while doing the lower defense and raising attack skill of your team can benefit your team uh, very much. Uh, you know, it's just it just really depends on how you want to build. You know, if 
maybe if you want to use like a three DPS cleave team on arena offense, you might put the pirate up front and make him tanky um, because all he's really useful for is that lower defense and raise attack. You could also put Dazzling on someone like Water Basilisk. Um, you know, because you're bringing him for the immunity, you might as well give him a little bit more utility with a stun. I mean, he lowers defense, he brings immunity, uh, disorients the, the enemies, um, and he's the defense-based monster, so you can build him high resist and then put Dazzling on him just for the extra stuns on the enemy team. Um, just a, another great example to use Dazzling on someone like that. If you're if you're getting a lot of good dazzling gear that has the the you know attack or crit or crit damage stuff like that, you could put it on somebody like a candy uh, a candy munchkin. It, it, just having that extra utility and being able to do tons of damage and more utility defense, slower defense, immobilizing them um, and stunning them at the same time, and just it, it just can really just depends on your team comp, but you know. It, it could work for certain situations. You just have to think outside the box. Let's talk about the Brutal set. The Brutal gear set has an attack of 30%. Um, this is really good on bruisers, uh, you know, because you can build them tanky and being able to get the 30% more attack just on a gear set is pretty beneficial to someone that you want to build tanky and build um, with the ability to do a lot of damage. So it really just depends with Brutal. Uh, it's a good early game gear set, uh, but also you can also be able to bring different gear sets that you might not use on someone like a Brutal with, you know, maybe an, an HP um, like this, uh, you know, besides the, the substats, but being able to make someone tanky and put out damage. 30% is a significant amount. Um, you know, using, you know, if you, say you want to do the attack, crit damage attack set on a bruiser, um, but then use vital runes, something like that, you know, that 15% from a, 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 a two set, um, it really just depends on your gear, but brutal can benefit bruisers. It can benefit marksmen's, uh, such as like uh, like Dark Ranger, for example, and even the gear recommendations kind of say that too. But don't mind these gears; it's just filler gears right now um, until a free gear remove day. But you know, it, it just benefits you because you know, with with people like her, where um, you might want to do attack speed because of the every fourth is an automatic crit. Um, you know, another skill based on attack speed. She raises her own attack speed, so you could go brutal and then put attack speed on the shoulder piece, and you know, can benefit that way. Other people to think about are timekeepers. I mean, timekeepers, uh, their heal is based off of attack. Um, they don't benefit from anything else besides attack and accuracy. So you can kind of go brutal set and even go like attack, attack, accuracy, or whatever the case may be. Um, even triple attack. When you, when you have triple attack and then you have the brutal set with 30% more, um, in the solo capability of a timekeeper um, it just is just so much more because they will heal for more and heal themselves for more. So you can kind of go like a you know, just like a full damage team comp for Steel Widow, uh, for example, using like three timekeepers and the low cooldowns um, from this, and then with two other timekeepers, you know, every five seconds you're going to be dropping off three seconds from this skill. It's just the solo capability is huge champions you could think about putting brutal sets on or or someone like a, um, a a dark derby girl okay she doesn't really benefit from any bonus damage um, except for attack speed however you know you can make her tanky she's a stun locking queen okay um, and putting attack speed on her and then brutal but then using you know putting HP or defense on the bracer or the gloves with the attack speed on the shoulder piece, it's just more damage, more survivability, um, and you know, just the, the output of the damage can be huge. Let's talk about the rapid gear set. The rapid gear sets add attack speed plus 25% to your champion, and it's highly confused with the swift gear, which in a game that is turn-based, 
you can't compare that to something like rapid um, and that's for a whole different video that I want to bring out but you can't compare a turn-based game with a live action game because it's just there's there's no speed bar or turn bar for say everything's live everything's action-packed so there, there's no such thing the closest thing to your swift gear would probably be adept because with adept you're lowering the skill cooldowns of your team and you're able to put out more skills over time which would be close to the swift spet the swift gear set being speed of your turns so the more turns you get so you can't confuse rapid with swift because it's two completely different things gear would be good on attack speed nukers um, supports that have you know high attack speed because um, you always have to look at the base stats as well everybody's base stats are gonna be different you know it's you know attack speed for um, Malika is 1.7 you know for Artinelius it's 1.55 um, 1.7 you know 1.55 is pretty much the average from what I've seen um, and it really just depends on the monster um, but you always want to look at base stats too when you're building and that's going to be for a different video too uh, you know what gear sets to you know how to gear your champions really um, is just another uh, video that I'm going to be producing but you know the average attack speed that I've seen in most of the champions is 1.55 um, so really when you see um, a high attack speed over 1.55 you might want to consider attack speed, especially if some of their skills are based off of attack speed, like here. Examples of attack speed nukes that you could use it on. Um, for rapid, I mean, there's so many different options, but I mean, you know, the, the water valk, all of her stuff, and her heal, she self buffs attack speed, her heal is based off attack speed, her second skill is based off attack speed, uh, the, the bounces, so the AoE damage that you can do. Um, is based off of how many times you're attacking uh, every third attack so just another good person to put it on someone with a basic you gotta definitely look at the basic skills of all your champions you know bonus damage based on the enemy's missing HP can be huge uh, so you could put rapid on someone like a fire fox assassin um, even a support with with his basic you know all of his skills are based off of max HP However, if you want to remove all debuffs from a single nearby alley, ally, 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 every eighth attack, you know, you want that, you want that, you, the most attacks and quick as possible. So, um, could benef benefit from that. If you're going to go with the speed nuke for Rota, which, you know, it can, might hurt your, your Elder Drake 10 team because really Elder Drake 10 is just all about survivability and high HP and defense. But if you want to use her like in an arena and then use her in Elder Drake 10 2, you could put Rapid on her just to for that more damage. I mean, everything of her is based off attack speed as well, and she can do a significant amount of damage because a lot of people are six starring her early because you can use her in multiple different areas of the game. Um, so using her you know with the rapid set um, don't mind the crappy gear but um, I don't really use her that much except for Elder Drake 10 but um, yeah I mean she's she just benefits from attack speed and those are the kind of champions that you want rapid on the people to think about putting rapid on would be someone like a support that has a, a special debuff on the basic skill like like Mojo I mean putting rapid on him um, He's got the average attack speed, um, but if you already have him super tanky in other areas um, and you want to change his gear a little bit, put a rapid on him to put the disorient, uh, to have the chance to put the disorient on the enemy. Um, disorient is highly underrated, I feel like. There's a lot of people that forget that disorient can help your Elder Drake team tremendously because Elder Drake hits super hard. So, uh, disorient. Even though Mojo is used in a lot of areas because of lack of defense buff for your team, um, that's why a lot of people use Mojo. But putting Mojo, this little gremlin man, on Rapid can help your Eldrick team because you know a lot of people just build him, you know, tanky just 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 for the defense buff. Um, 
and for the lower attack speed, but putting accuracy on and, and having high attack speed for more attacks on disorient on the enemy is it's huge. If when you especially when you have using Rota for example and then you have the lower attack debuff and you also have disorient, I mean your your team is gonna survive. Staying on to the four set gears, I'm gonna talk about Adept, Mortal, and also Vampiric. Um, I'll get to the two sets here in a little bit. Let's start with Adept. Adept is probably one of the best gear sets in the game. Um, and there was a big controversy with the new patch coming out about the cooldown cap. And now they have removed that uh, for the future. So, you know, it, it's debatable whether it would have been good or not. Um, I'm, I'm not going to talk about that. But, you know, Adept is good on most characters, especially uh, Snake Ladies for one. But two, anyone that requires um you know having to be able to put out either heals or ongoing damage uh, is just good on the depth uh, having higher um timers on your skills as well um is more beneficial for a depth like i said like on someone who has a low school cooldown because if you're taking 30 percent off of five you know that's like a second and a half or something like that but if you take off 30 per second from an eight second skill uh now you're talking about you know like a two second you know or two and a half or something like that the higher skill cooldowns that you have would benefit more from adept so you know putting it someone on like a, a 11 second heal putting 30 percent off of that you know that's that's it's like 3.3 seconds that you're taking off so it's going to get that burst heal every seven and a half eight seconds so in my opinion adept is good on snake ladies just because the more skills she's putting out when the the enemy has mark on uh it's going to be more ongoing damage ongoing damage um time keepers just because of the heals the strips and the ongoing damage that they have um anyone that has even rhoda for example rhoda can be great on adept uh with her uh fourth skill um, lowering the cooldowns of herself and all allies um, that's going to be huge now I think this might be fixed in the patch where she doesn't lower her own school cooldown um, but I have to reread that but just be something to be aware of um, but in any regards she's gonna be using this more and lowering the cooldown of all of her allies um, and these are already uh, somewhat low skill cooldowns and if you build her like a nuke with a depth set it, it could be very beneficial to an arena team the boon sisters fire light example um, you know the heal on the depth and everything else with it lowering defense the strips uh, the stuns from Xenia um, the more skills that you're putting out on a support type healer is just so much more beneficial other people to think about putting Adept on, like Nukers, for example, um, is like anyone with a lot of stuns, you know, just being able to stun lock them tremendously can can hurt the enemy and they can't do anything. So putting Adept on someone like, you know, Dark Dino, for example, especially after the buff when he, when he gets a buff, um, could be beneficial. Let's talk about the Mortal set. The Mortal set will bring you 45% more crit damage to your champion so let's think about people that would benefit mortal and crit damage so crit damage uh it's really beneficial the most for anyone that has ignored defense or it damage based off the enemy's max hp the main reason being is it's always going to be a fixed damage modifier per se you know it it's defense has nothing to do with it so if you put crit damage on someone who comparable to ignore defense and then someone that's comparable to just you know based off of attack um, when you're basing off your damage off of attack and there is defense added um, it's 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 going to be much lower now when you have crit damage or i mean when you have ignore defense and you're doing crit damage it's only going to go up from there because it's already has it has a base amount of damage that it's doing because there's no defense so 
the higher the crit damage, the higher that that's going to go up your base damage, and it's, a, it's pretty much like a fixed rate, so you're already ex knowing and expecting what you're going to get. Mortal would be beneficial to someone like a, a candy munchkin, you know, nature or light, and even water, for example, just being able to do damage based off the enemy's max HP, especially on champions that have it in two different skills, um, is just much more beneficial because it's it's a fixed rate. It's off of the enemy's max HP, so the max HP is always going to stay the same, and being able to just apply higher amounts of crit damage to a fixed rate is much more beneficial. The option is someone like Blade Masters or anyone that has bonus crit damage, okay? Uh, just all of her skills have deals damage based off of the crit damage. When you see something like this and it's on every single skill, that's huge. I mean, you, you have to take that into effect. Uh, you have to look at the skills of your champions, and, and when you see a common, a common bond, a common area, or a common bonus, you want to you want to push that to the limit. Something else to think about is high HP monsters. When you have someone that's tanky and also can put out a ton of damage, that can it's it's very overwhelming right now how you know supports and tankiness is affecting the game right now um you know greater demons for example they can put out huge damage uh you can do triple hp or hp crit damage hp and still have a ton of health and if you have high crit and high crit damage i mean it's just even better um you know someone like even a fire archangel you know every skill is pretty much based off of max hp the first two anyway that's doing damage um you know, just the more damage and the more tanky, the better. Last but not least for the four sets is Vampiric. Obviously, Vampiric is well known. It's just uh, pretty much a health leech. Um, the amount of damage that you do is how much life sealing you get. So 30% of the damage that you do is reapplied back to you as a heal. Um, it does not affect anything about, you know, your... the HP of the enemy unless your skills are based off the enemy's max HP but it's all about the damage that you done not not your health not whatever the case may be um, it's all about the damage that you do so obviously um, the vamp vampire can be used for nukers for farmers your best farmer that you have um, or also you know a lot of nukes for survivability a lot of people put vampiric on candy munchkins for you know elder drake 10 or you know if you use water candy munchkin for steel widow 10 because they can put out a ton of damage in elder drake and steel widow um but you know this is the more survivability they have to be able to solo without relying on heals the better other champions to think about putting life stealing on is defense based champions. Um, now, the thing with defense based champions is there's so much armor break in the game that um, it's kind of underwhelming. They need super high resistance um, to be able to keep up their defense because when our defense broken, they're just they're just done. So. Uh, if you have high resistance on a defense based monster, you can think about putting Vampiric on it because they're taking less damage and then if they're doing damage based off of defense uh, on a lot of skills, then you were benefiting that and taking less damage, healing yourself, just the survivability that is possible is high. Now let's talk about the two sets, okay? The two set gears like Vital, uh, Precise, Sturdy keen uh the resistance one which i still don't remember what the name of it is let's check it out uh warding so the two sets are really for early game um and late game fillers okay um the two sets they don't they provide bonuses yes um but depending on the type of champion that you use it for they're really made for early game because late game you have the ability to have gear that has crazy amount of substats um, and it's just you don't need that extra bonus it's all about your it's going to be all about your overall stats okay 
you know very end game yeah you can optimize it so that you have a four set and a two set and your substats are just going to be ridiculously crazy however um two sets are mainly just for fillers let's start with vital vital is 15 percent max hp to your champion um early game you know what i did was i pretty much put three sets of vital on most of my champions um, because all my focus was was getting through elder drake being able to farm elder drake 10 getting through steel widow clearing steel widow 10 so the higher survivability that i had um, the better so for example like on um on rhoda for example uh, i have I mean, I, I use her in Elder Drake 10, and she's five star. And look at the gear; it's crap. I, you know, whatever. But I literally just use it to get the three set bonus and to be able to survive. Um, you know, even with crap gear, it's 30k HP. Does fine because I have the lower attack and I have a defense buff, and I also have a disorient. So early game, you just want to do, you know triple vital if you're going to use if you want high survivability and just do triple hp or double hp and accuracy or double hp and defense and you can profit from that the same goes for sturdy i mean sturdy you can use if you're if you're going to go the defense route you know and you have you know just use just use double vital and and one sturdy set or you can do double sturdy sets with one vital set or even triple sturdy set but always look at the the base defense okay cuz other people can benefit higher from from the sturdy sets than um than than others okay so you know for example it's 413 413 436 you know 360 it just really just depends on who you are using okay the other two set fillers is really just depending on what you really want to accomplish with your champion um, with precise I mean if you are having trouble landing ongoing damage or whatever the case may be um, you know use use the precise okay um, you know like for here for example if you're using accuracy on a bracer you might not want to go precise because you're getting the accuracy on it it just depends on your gear it always depends um, you know I could do precise set instead of vital and then put HP in this last slot and then I'd still get you know it's it's just with precise you're getting 20% accuracy but you know I, I lose out on a little bit of accuracy up here but it also depends on your substats of your other gear if you have high accuracy in your main four set then you might not need accuracy anymore so you can go vital or sturdy whatever the case may be let's also talk about the keen set okay because this is the vital important part of how to use the keen set now keen set in my opinion is super early game and mid game okay in late game you're not going to need the keen set and for that reason being is because your substats in late game are you're gonna get you know crit rates of in every single piece of gear like 10 or you know 21 percent like as I, I love this one um, but you know the right there just in two pieces of gear is 31 percent crit rate <clears throat> so you won't need to have keen um, end game because you're just going to be able to have the substats to benefit that so then you can put in you know a secondary filler or even a broken set if you want to get higher crit damage and you have sub you know substats of a ton of crit damage instead of crit rate then you would use that instead but early game in this game you can go triple keen set you have 45 percent um crit rate and then obviously you already have 15 so that's 60 percent and then you go into substats of crit rate and you can get super high crit rate be able to go crit damage in your gloves um, and benefit from that you just have to think a little bit outside the box all the time i have today thanks for watching please like and subscribe to my video i do want to do a quick little shout out to game off and uh i am very appreciative and thankful for them um 
to feature me as a YouTuber for content creator. So thank you to Gameloft and to your whole team. I appreciate that. And I do recognize that you do see me as a content creator. So thank you very much. So uh, guys, please tune in to next time. Uh, I should have a video, another video in probably the next day or two. So thanks for watching. Have a good day. Peace.